Hello. Hello and welcome to my show, TikTok, where we talk about what makes successful people tick and what it took for them to pursue their passions, follow their dreams, and achieve their goals. The wild response to the announcement of today's guest was expected. I don't think there's any Filipina alive who doesn't idolize our guest, or at least want to try hard to be her copycat, to be the kind of woman she is, if only they were brave enough to dare. She's the best at what she does, so confident, so self-assured, self-realized, unapologetic about what she says or does, or about living life on her own terms. In short, she's her own woman, which is what her German surname, Eigenmann, actually means. His own man. We have so much to learn about her and from her today. Please welcome Sherry Hill. Mirza. Hi. Wow. Hi. Hi. Oh my god, what an intro. <laughs> okay. Everyone's so excited. How are you well, today? I'm not sure. Well, today is the day before tomorrow's first day of my classes, so I'm well into deep preparation. I'll be very honest. Um, I'm quite excited. But looking at my list of students now, I have a mix of so many different walks of life and different occupations. And so now I'm beginning to have to um, integrate the whole lesson plan. Teacher, teacher, and today. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, frankly, I'll be honest, Mirda, it's like, you know, little did I know it's worse than going on stage for a one woman play. Kaupa, are you sure? <laughs> Well, I'm very excited because I signed up. <laughs> I know, that even makes it even more anxious for me. <laughs> I'm terrified, but, but I know you. I'm going to learn a lot, if only to bask oh. in your knowledge. <laughs> oh my goodness, thank you, Mirza, for the trust. And in as much as I'm doing this for sharing what I can uh, and have learned through the many years I've been doing this acting business, I know I can also, by doing that, you know, um, have this osmosis of an exchange that I will be learning from all of you as well. So I'm excited because after all, we've been all locked in in this scenario. So in a way, it's a good way to engage with one another. How did, how did, I, how did the idea come about? So, did you always want to teach a master class? Hello? Hello? Uh oh, you froze. Can you hear me? Hello? Hi, Shari. Can you hear me? You froze. Uh huh. Hi, Shari. Can you hear me? Hang on, we're gonna try and get her back. Please hang on. Hello? <laughs> Are you back? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. If there's anything I still have to learn from all this is the technology. Oh, Amazing. okay. 
I hope it doesn't happen tomorrow in the class. All My right. battery ran out. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> to plug in. Okay, we're back. <laughs> All right, apologies. May mga tech. Ano pala <laughs> kahit na dito. Brown out daw, brown out. Brown out! Biglang na wala. Understandable. Understandable. Lockdown, ano, challenges. I know. Well, I've been using my, ano kasi, computer, and I just forgot to plug it in. Oh, <laughs> that happened to me once, too. But anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, okay. That's the exciting part, right? You know? Right. How did Summer you one. think of... Yeah. Uh, did you always want to teach a master class of sorts, or how did it come well, about? Yeah, no, frankly, um, I was just sitting around here, and I thought, you know, um, I've been writing about what I would like to share in terms of my experiences, sort of like a memoir of sorts, working memoir, um, spending my alone time, and I realized a lot of my um, friends have been telling me why don't you do it online and that way i didn't have yet the courage to do it online because again it's a whole different platform that limits you know the the engagement the acting is when you interact with one another face to face and you need all that physical space also to move and exercise but yeah I, I thought, you know, why not give them a certain framework of my experiences? And it took me a while to get the courage. So why not? And I thought this way um, uh, I can engage my the, the actual book that I'm trying to prepare and in a way go through the same uh, integrated development of it. Before I did do a teaching, uh, I did teach a class in actual acting in Karamoan with the Rebelde camp. It's um, a group of young filmmakers. Uh, it was founded by J.E. Tiglau. And that very first time I actually thought with uh, uh, young filmmakers and aspiring actors, it felt very um, enriching and uh, humbling. And in a way, it was, it, it was a good way to ground myself and open also my own resources. It was also a good way for me to get to um, uh, relearn all that I have had to relearn in the past. So that right. <laughs> You've said that uh, it's not an acting workshop. Well, so what, not what in the actual. Yeah. You know, like in, in the typical acting workshop environment, you have a lot of exercises that you need to go through to connect to one another. And that's that the, that demands physical presence. So I'm going to try to translate my concepts and my principles and insights on what I have um, used through all the methods and all the systems and the practice of, of the practical approaches I have um, done for myself in in my actual work, which I feel in any creative expression in any creative outlet. This may be very much used as a uh, to be utilized as a tool for for every for anyone, and I think it's been well, it's become very essential for me also because I think as an actor it's one of the professions that I think has become a very um, a great way to learn oneself at the same time engage in expressing it on stage so it's kind of intertwined and. So it's in a way helpful in terms of self-discovery. So I will be uh, uh, perhaps planning certain work, fun worksheets and fun uh, imaginary exercises that we can do in this limitation of the platform of Zoom. Because frame by frame, it's very hard. <laughs> so I'm sure so it's a whole different energy. This has uh, necessitated going back in time through your life, kind of rewinding from the very yeah. start. And you've been acting since you were nine years old. That's like yeah. over 45 yeah. years of experience. Yeah. And no, no. what have you concluded what, when you look back about <laughs> your what life? What have I concluded? <laughs> oh, I'm still in the process of, of, of discovery. Um, 
you know, and so I've concluded that the learning never stops, the yearning never stops, and that with all this situation, this uncertainty, and this new normal that we're all faced with, I'm one who's used to action, you know, and I always said, without what I do, I will wither. And yeah, so in a way, I think that creativity should never end. And that's something I discovered about myself. And that's why I decided to do this. I tend to also like to torture myself. <laughs> you know, I want to get myself out of my comfort zones and try something new. Um, yeah, so what I discovered is that discovery never ends. Which is what we should all do, and which is why I signed up. <laughs> and I'm glad you're doing your six oh, oh, wow. so, so, Yeah. And I could keep another thing I go on. Well, now that's another inspiring. I'm just um, learning as I go along. And hopefully, tomorrow, after tomorrow, I'll be even more inspired to keep learning. Oh my gosh. Keep reinventing. <laughs> You know, sometimes, I don't know, I ask myself, is it harder to teach people that you don't know from Adam or from or friends that you've met and been friends with and constantly <laughs> knowing them? You know? So I guess, you know, it's a good way because it's a good mix in the sense that you'll know when I'm bullshitting. <laughs> <laughs> I find no, it, it's scarier. The older you get, the scarier it gets. Like when you're young and know nothing, you're fearless, right? as you probably were before, because you were thrust into the acting life. I don't know, maybe the minute yeah. you were born, you were so young and you were thrust into it and you yeah. just learned along the way, right? It did. Yeah. Uh, it helped that your parents were, you know. Yes, definitely. Actors already. And at, at what point in your acting career, in your life, did you decide that this is it, this is my calling, my profession? Or was that instilled in you from the time you started? Well, frankly, I'll be honest, and I'll share this also in our class. When I'll give away a bit, a bit of it. Sure, genetic has a lot to do with it. Environment has a lot to do with it. People who influence you to go in and, and lean you towards that direction. But I think I was already born innately uh, loving to perform. Uh, when I decided to really be in the business, I didn't decide. It was just by sheer destiny. Um, there were many times as a teen, I hated it. I really hated it. I wanted to get out of it. And so therefore, there were times I just, you know, uh, rebelled. And um, I couldn't come to terms with um, myself and that. And then, in fact, I did leave the country for right. a while. I decided to marry. I went away. And when I decided to go away and then... I looked back and, and, and stepped back and looked at it, you know, um, objectively. That's when I finally realized, I think it comes to a point when you um, come to self-individuation and come to realize that that's what you really want to do. Um, so it came later in life that when I decided to go back, that it was finally a choice. Because um, I could have done other things. I could have gotten in a, a different path, right? But regardless, what I'm trying to say is what I will try to awaken in all of us, which is innate in any way in all of us, is the creativity side of all of us. So regardless of whether you were born out of showbiz parents or real artists or not, you can discover it. And it's your choice to follow that path in whatever occupation you choose in life. So I could have decided to be another person. I could have, I mean, chosen a different path in terms of a, a profession, let's say a lawyer or a real estate broker, a chef or a flight attendant or even a TikTok host and still <laughs> find that, right? And still find that um, identity of self. So, uh, and creativity. So what, what we're going to do is basically discovering that and I will use my acting concepts given that half of the class are actors. So by using that and applying our practices together, the other participants who are in different professions can gain and, and hopefully um, take from that as well to apply into their own lives. So as so, far as I'm concerned, it's always been part of me, yeah. So it took stepping away from it to appreciate it when you came back, right? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, I think it's very important 
for a person to make their own decisions in life as to which path they want to take. So at 57, I turned 57 last, last month. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, late bloomer. Late bloomer, eh. you know. Um, I guess it, it, there will always be passages naman in our lives when we decide, oh, okay, I, I was taught to follow this path because I was told that that's what I should do um, by whatever, conventions, uh, beliefs, uh, parenting. And uh, later on, you decide, oh, maybe I should shift to this place and that place or stick to that one and commit fully and and do your best. So oh. I stuck to mine. How old were you when uh, Between Walang Ning Ning became a hit? Um, you know, I never relate my life experiences with how old I was. I relate or, them to who was or who was my boyfriend at the <laughs> time. <laughs> or at that point, were you already married to Ronnie or not yet? No, I was single. I was then at the time, that was 1986. Right. Um, let's put it this way. I was, I was, I, I had gave birth to my firstborn in 1987. So it was oh. about a year before, 85, 86. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. that movie kind of uh, with that iconic line and in honor of which I'm wearing the Sherry Hill shirt. Oh my god. I'm Meron pa Bob, I'm sure people will ask kung meron pa. Actually, that was released by uh, Freeway. Oh, with Siri, okay. But Wako, right. yeah, yeah. That's we right. did a right. collaboration many years ago. So, <laughs> so that, that, was, was, that line uh, became yeah. iconic along with your role and you as like uh, the bar for the Contrabida during yeah. that time, right? Are, are you ever, do you, have you ever gotten sick of being identified with that line. Like every article that I came across started with that. Every interview. Yeah. And people make you throw drinks at their faces when they see yeah. you out in public. Do you ever get tired of it? Yeah. There was a time. <laughs> like every comedy show I had to be a part of, guestings and all, it's always a part of it or any kind of um you know gig that i'd have to hold a glass or it's become like uh, you know a, a signature image uh, it it became annoying when i said should you know when i said like people would say you should have gotten royalties for it we kind of opened up this idea and then all of a sudden my mindset was like oh no no but you know at the end of the day forget it because of that i was I, it remained to be relevant so like I said, I welcome it. All the controversies that was, you know, that was tagged to it as well. That were so tagged you, to you it. Come, so you mm -hmm. come to accept and appreciate it as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as it's, you know, at least done right. <laughs> <laughs> so people can still approach you and have wines thrown in their faces for fun. Well, for that, <laughs> I will have to... Yeah, you have to charge. Thing. You should start charging. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I did not open a social media account just for that. Oh, and yeah, yeah. And then um, it stopped at number twelve. My mission was a hundred. Okay. And yeah, so I was at that time bent on doing it to Nora or not because we were working <laughs> together. I thought that was my dream, buhos for whatever. And we planned it a couple of times, but it never happened. So I lost my Ghana. And then at some point, I got, I went to dinner with, with the original Dorina. Yes. Oh, wow. Sharon. And then she decided to do it to me. So after that, I thought, you know, it wasn't anymore going to be organic if I continued with my mission because I already hit the, the ultimate goal with doing it again with Shawi in, 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 in reverse. So. I ended the mission. No, I know mission it would be unaccomplished. The ultimate, I know, the ultimate uh, recipient of the wine, Meryl Streep. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm not going to be able to get a little bit of a What was that yeah, like? Well, meeting her. 
You were <laughs> starstruck. Completely. I was a fool. I waited. I wasted my moment with her. I I just couldn't. I for the first time I realized this is when I realized that okay, um, it's time to break the boundaries in terms of myself and 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 the rest of the world, you know, um, and and not keep our minds closed to just this. We are all human beings. I could have just gone there and say, you know, Miss Merrill, I would love to uh, see you work. Uh, I go to New York often. If I could like play it all back, I'd say it. <laughs> but now I'm praying that I'll see her again, one way or another. I'm sure it will. You happen. know, <laughs> every time I project something in life that I want to do, it seems it to happen. Like, wow. yeah, if, if it's so synced, I believe that when personality and your soul's desire is so synced, it's absolute power. There was a time I was crazy with. Uh, about I was crazy about American Idol, uh, David, um, not Archuleta. I forgot his name. <laughs> the second placer, the first placer. Okay. I was so crazy about him. And so on the day I was leaving for New York, for New York, he was on the same plane as I, right in front wow. of me. You know, things like that. And then I did master class. I put my whole heart and soul to it, to portraying Maria Callas. And one of my visits to New York, I was linked to meeting my lawyer, Senas. I got to meet the late Terrence McNally. He, uh, he opened the doors to me in his apartment, the one, the playwright of Masterclass. Things wow. like that. Yeah. And wow. now, of course, meeting Meryl Street. So I have a lot of my, to meet people in my list. <laughs> So after uh, the height of your success, Lavinia and that movie and a string of others, you got married and left. Yeah, ten years. What was that like? And, and you all, you've said in an inter the Esquire interview that you need you were lost and wild and needed saving by Ronnie. Ah, yes, yes, definitely. Like Did I you said, like I told you. Tell us about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, sure. I mean, it's true. Uh, it's like an, a damsel in distress. <laughs> My knight in shining armor. So at that time, Ronnie was the one who actually opened the doors to a different world, different life, a different time, a different, um, you know, uh, exposure to all that you can possibly become. And up to this day, I can only thank him for that. And all the roles thereafter, like Maria Callas, uh, Diana Vreeland, all those other roles, even Sonata, roles I've played, I could not have had been able to understand those uh, characters if not for the exposure and the life that Ronnie has shown me. And so, yeah, uh, at, at that time I was 24. So, um, come on, it was like, ugh. Everything was so big, and, and, and the world was at his feet, and, I, and he showed me all of that. And not only that, uh, he also showed me the, the height of amazing uh, uh, professionalism in his art. So he was one of my inspirations, if not my mentor. Yeah, so uh, I'm done being saved. I'm saving myself. <laughs> <in the end>. <laughs> <laughs> What would you like to tell women about this fantasy of being saved? Like for you, it became a learning experience as well. Yeah. Right? Because you became a woman of the world because of the man of the world that you met. But so yeah. many women, I think, still in this day and age, uh, yearn to be saved. What Do you have any advice for them about Wanting well, this? Is it a bad thing? Is it necessary? Uh, I'm not supposed to judge, really. I mean, uh, society and culture now is moving so fast in a different direction. The, the mindset, the, the perspective, perspective of, in life. I mean, I have a daughter who's very much of a strong feminist. And, um, you know, so in her own trajectory, she's realizing a lot of things that I probably didn't realize at her age. So all those influences. And she, of course, was, is, it lives in New York. And uh, it, 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 it varies uh, from culture to culture, really. But I think the phenomenon of, of, of all this uh, 
new movements, you know, the Me Too movement and all these other uh, established feminist power. I, I think it's beginning to wake up the minds of the, especially the millennials in the next generation. So who's to judge really? I think the product of these millennials and what they have become are products of parents like us. So um, it's always, you know, trying to push the envelope all the time. Looking back, I probably as a mother would stop having read fairy tale stories to my daughter as far as, and they right. lived happily ever after being that she found her prince, right? right. Uh, so it was imprinted in my head in many of our, uh, in our generation and prior. So from the time our mothers grew up in the 50s, the mindset was different and everything now is beginning to change even in our generation and even beyond. So there's an evolution of thought. Um, I now believe that it's not about having to meet a prince charming and then live happily ever after. I think one should live happily ever after and then meet his prince, her prince. So <laughs> I think it's the, the other way around. Um, I'm a divorced woman at this point, 57, with the knowledge of that. I still want to give myself the hope that I will still be able to meet my Prince Charming. But at this moment, I don't even think that I would be uh, wanting it or am I looking for it because I'm so busy, you know, living my life happily ever after. <laughs> right. I saw, I saw a meme that said we should really normalize love in our 40s, finding true love or love in our 40s, 50s, and not just in our 20s, because we're so conditioned to believe that the love you find in your 20s is the love, right? When actually, yeah. it should be like no age. That way, you never think like it's a death sentence if you fail that a relationship in your 20s. Wala na, tapos na, right? But yeah. And I think you're... Big... Go ahead. Go ahead. I think also because the, the, the concepts of marriage have changed as well. Yeah. Sorry, could you repeat that? You froze for a while. Uh, the idea of the ideal of what marriage is. I mean, that in fact has also changed. Uh, the idea of marriage in the past was about um, coming together and, uh, and go forth and multiply. So women were worried about the biological clock. So now there are women who decide that they, will, they don't need to get married and have children. They don't need to dis they decide. It's a choice. Some of them don't um, decide to have no children from the get-go and still That's be free. That's They're true. Back. So many choices. So, so going to what you said about the age factor, um, look, scientifically, uh, the prefrontal cortex does not develop until you're age 25. Boy, I, had, I wish I had known that when I was 18. <laughs> when I, was, I was pregnant at 23, Baba. Right. Yeah. But no regrets. I have amazing children. Um, it's not right. to say that, um, I, I mean, some women decided not to have them. I decided I wanted to have my children. I met Ronnie as well after my firstborn. And I'm blessed with a wonderful family that up to now are very much connected and we're friends. And um, yeah, I have an amazing 20, 32 year old now who I think is, you know, I like to think I've, he's brought up pretty well. Uh, he's independent and very good head on his shoulder and successful in what he does. And right. now I have two others who, my son just graduated, Rafael. Congrats. Um, yeah, in spite of what, have, what, what a historic event in, in our lives in this year that he's graduated, I told him it's for the books, you know. In spite of that, he's still uh, on his feet and on a, with the head on his shoulders. I'm very proud of my kids. Bianca as well. Bianca is an actress. Right. In fact, she, she is the legitimate one who went through four years of training and consistently and con constantly does it. She is completely dedicated to it. She went into the classic field and learned a lot about Shakespeare and all the and Brecht and all the classic uh, playwrights, which I'm really, you know, mm, flabbergasted, like in awe of what she knows. Wow. So, does she ever? Her, does she ever ask you for advice about acting? No, and the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you mentioned some turn, turning points in your life that made you rethink the direction of your life, and one of which was the tsunami of 2004. You said yeah. it made you. What what happened then, and what uh, epiphany did you have about your life? Wow, now that's a regression. Um, a digression rather. Ah, oh, wow, that was a tough time. Um, well, you know, uh, without going much into the details, I just felt that at that moment was like a call to realize that life is really fleeting and it can just snap you out of this world. And the more you're aware of that mortality, the more you uh, value the days that you you spend and the moments you you. you expand yourself so at that time um my marriage was uh still in the works we had moved a lot and we had gotten back to the philippines and i started again with a few uh soaps at that time which my children my kids were very small a part of me my children didn't even know so i was beginning to reconnect to the more authentic part of me that i felt needed addressing and acknowledging so when that happened, I made a decision to stay and Ronnie made a decision to go back to New York where he's real, you know, a, a, an environment that he's been accustomed to in terms of his profession, which is understandable. So those are the decisions I had to make and we both had to make um, <clears throat> at the price of what? Being away geographically from each other, um, away from my children also that wasn't an easy time at all um, so ronnie being an artist we both understand that we primarily have to prioritize our missions that we feel we need to attend to in life and that's our artistic expression so meanwhile my kids i with the world that has been then prior to all this new normal travel was um accessible so i would go back and forth to New York and uh, whenever I wasn't doing work. And since that time, we've always been in touch. So I wish to see them on a daily basis, but I'm sure that there were things that we could have, uh, we avoided. I mean, I'm sure by destiny, we were spared <laughs> many <laughs> moments of, you know, conflict between mother and daughter and all that stuff. So I left it on the run. You know, I'm the fun side. <laughs> but not to say that there's still, you know, I mean, come on. There are all these relationship uh, issues that will always have to be resolved. Ano yan, right. lifelong yan. Well, I know I'm perfect about And I think you've actually mastered the art of um, very amicable co-parenting. I remember we were both in New York once, and then you said you went on a dating app, and then yeah. you, didn't, you didn't know that he was on the same app. And when, you, yeah. when, when the app found the match, it matched the two of you. Yeah. <laughs> That was so funny. <laughs> really, really funny. My kid signed me up and then people are signed up and he was in the other room and I heard him laughing and laughing. I said, what is it? And he just laughed because he said, we're connected. We're, we're linked. We're matched. I said, imagine that. Even the application matches us, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Another, another uh, sad turning point that you talk about was when your brother... Ralph mm. or Mark Mark Hill died. I remember you uh, after I think the funeral. You all the whole clan celebrated in M Cafe, Andre's restaurant, and you had like uh, a send off Eigenman style. And uh, how did it? How did it change you? Major in a major I, way, right? Um, I can, that particular, that event in my life as until now, I still can't articulate because it just awakens more emotions than, than I could even word. Um, and it's still, I think the whole family is still going through the process of grief. Ralph has left a major presence in our life, in my life, especially. 
he was my sparring partner in everything uh, I did as a child and all my fond memories as a child is in with Ralph in in in, the, in that in that memory. Um, so, well, in fact, I think he just has become an unconscious inspiration all the time to continue to to always be better at what we do, uh, what I do at least. Um, I guess there are times when I'm on my own alone and I know that things happen and I suddenly just have this motion of just, you know, connecting to him. Ikaw talaga, ha, Ralph, siguro, you told him this, or you told her that, or maybe you just didn't want this to happen. Yeah, I believe it to him. You know, so uh, there's that connect. Um, <clears throat> I feel like he's always watching. So, yeah, um, I don't think it ever will end, the, the, the missing, the yearning. But I uh, use that as my impetus to continuously live my life to the fullest. Right. And how are, what are the other ways that you are trying to live your life to the fullest? I mean, at 57, we can only uh, hope to achieve what you have achieved. And yet you're still at it, still blazing, blazing trails. <laughs> so inspiring. Well, uh, like, we, like you. No. Right? I mean, otherwise, like I said, I'll wither. I, I am a um, person who needs action. And um, I need a sense of, like I said, I need to engage to grow. I need human connection. There's a time I'm here with my dog. I find myself talking to my dog already, but my dog won't respond. But that's also okay because at least I know I get unconditional love from my dog. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is one of the things by setting up a class. Um, to tell you the truth, I'm working on a lesson plan. But I'm really more of a talker, and I try to do things organically, and I may not be able to stick to that lesson plan, depending on what I get from everyone in the group. So uh, I'm excited to go through this. So thanks, Mirza, for being part of the, the first <laughs> batch, my, my first victim. <laughs> <laughs> developmental, so yeah, developmental. You know, I'll go, I'll, I'll go with the flu. I'm really That's terrified. About all. <laughs> I am also. Don't say that. But um, we're just gonna have fun. I mean, as organic as natural as possible. Uh, you've led a very unconventional life. Maybe not for, I think, in terms of Philippine society, which, as we all know, has so many um, conservative roots up to now. All the Catholic upbringing has caused us to be conditioned to always care about what people will think, but you have just lived your life as you have damn pleased. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, in that Esquire, in that Esquire video, you said you never, was... really, you never really cared what people thought. Where, where did this come from and how come you were so different from everybody else? Frankly, maliit pa lang ako, maldita na ako. <laughs> <laughs> Kailangan natin um, lang. I don't know. know. I had a very strong mother um, who left as much to our own independence and our own, uh, you know, she trusted us. So right. she was the type of mother who just felt that the trust that she had felt that uh, we are okay to find out for ourselves and learn sure we had to be broken in our own right on our own time so, but that's the thing i want to talk about the conventional the, the conventions the dogmas of bringing right we only allow ourselves to be in as much as we feel we can manage the hurt or the pain or the lesson we will have to allow ourselves that. And no one else can tell us that. You know? Right. So, you know, uh, sure, the only way we learn is by just, you know, swimming and, if, and, and getting out of that water if you're drowning. Uh, sure, we make mistakes too, uh, but I'd rather call them lessons. And how do we deal with that? So, I, I, 
I think it's in the living that we do it. I find that I cannot allow myself to be limited with whatever it is I wish to experience in the manner of which I can manage it. So, kanya kanya yan, you know, kanya kanya. How hard are oh, your questions? Oh my! Philosophical. These are actually what I've really wanted to ask you. In the Don't forget, uh, my father is oh, a yeah. Christian. Oh really? Oh yeah, that's right. And any uh, conflicts so, in philosophies we, or? No. Do you ever argue about these things? Yeah, I just don't go into it. Just don't talk to me about politics and don't talk to me about religion. <laughs> I really don't. No, I, I'm, I'm out of that. The moment you bring in, say, into the table of political views and political stands and protests, I don't want to waste my energy in that. That's just me. Right. I live for freedom. Right. So should everyone. Oh, at 57, you look incredible. Oh and my goodness. <laughs> just and looking for the light. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have your own inner light. How have you <laughs> come to terms with, uh, let's face it, it's a vain industry where youth is priced and prioritized. How have you come to terms about aging and... Everything that comes with it. Yeah, we're full of that, no? The ageism factor. I've had to fight a couple of times when I needed to have roles still played within my, my age and yeah. having to present myself uh, living lives of women my age that they cannot just be compartmentalized into just being one, one right. component. Like, right. just, okay, mother, mother, kalang, you know, we all have lives. So at this point, I think, I, in a way, I've established that already in the networks that I always look for something beyond just being the mother. Right. Um, so I need to give it life. And they, they, they come up naman and, and, and pursue those um, requirements that I have. Um, sure, there are moments when I see these beautiful young la ladies on screen, especially on TV when everything is HD, and I say, oh my God, my wrinkles, right? <laughs> I mean, there's that demand of still having to try to look pleasant enough on screen. But I think I'm done. I'm done with that. Um, sure, I've tried a couple of times to do Botox, and I, at, at some point, I, I felt like it was getting to be more uh, detrimental because as, as it wears out, then you cannot uh, observe observe how it's actually deteriorating. It finally becomes worse, right? So I let it go. I, I just said, you know, I'm already at the place where I think there are a lot of parts that will still be very much um, in line of where and how I look, uh, especially in the theater. So now I'm 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 done. It it came to a point, yeah. It came to a point not because I was like, uh, you know, uh, worried about getting older or or no. It was my job on TV. I needed to have that kind of uh, approach wherein you needed to look at least good. Although although I, I find that certain times it should be the job of the cinema the cinematographer or the lighting director. But after what I didn't care because you know I'd rather save my face than just do it for my job. And I've seen a lot who have become very addicted addicted to to doing all this magic on their faces dermatologically that they look worse. So I stopped. <laughs> I stopped at well, I stopped at both off. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. One of my eyebrows was higher than the other. Oh. And I don't have any more moving. I said, that's it. It's going to get in the way of my acting. I'm not going <laughs> to try. Of course I tried. Bye-bye lang din ako, di ba? But, so, yeah. I decided to just stick to what I can in my own daily regimen, my own usual of eating habits, my yoga, my... um. My joie de vivre. That's what keeps me young, I think. <laughs> that's, yes, that's true. Action. Joie de vivre. And you also have a sense of uh, an attitude of gratitude, which I always 
sense like you're always thankful for every moment every opportunity and i think this radiates from within and it's something that we all aspire to do what about what the other do? oh thank you <laughs> another fear that women have apart from aging is the fear of being alone mm. right have you had this fear and if not or if you have how have you come to terms with it and as you said, uh, the Prince Charming should just be a bonus because happily ever after should be all throughout yeah. your life. Yeah, I mean, sure, there was a point when I was still trying to deal with my divorce and it took me a while to deal with my divorce. Um, I've been divorced 12 years and given that <clears throat> Ronnie has always been a very strong presence in my life, uh, there was always a yearning you know, and there are moments when, ah, did I do wrong? I wish I did this and I wish I did that. I probably would have done better in my marriage because we're still friends. And at the end of the day, he's there and yet he's not. And so there's that tug of war. But then you, it comes to a point where I decided, okay, this is me and that's him. I have to deal with the fact that what it is about me that can't still accommodate a partner. So I stopped uh, yearning for it. And... Thanks to the lockdown, I've come to a place that I've now enjoyed my being by myself. And in fact, we come to, I, I come to terms with the fact that we were born to, alone and we die alone. You know, <laughs> and everyone else that comes in between are basically, like you said, bonus relationships. Um, and I'll be temporary. So, yeah, I've come to terms with that. And like, again... Um, Ralph has become a very strong partner in crime. And now that he's gone, I thought, oh, he's one major big entity in my life and he's not there anymore. So I just have that strong connection to that. But it's not like my life is not complete without them anymore, you know? So again, it's having to know yourself, your limitations, what you can accommodate, and where you better, when you're, where, where you function most in the best of who you are. If I'm going to bring in a person in my life, I'm just going to be disastrous to him. I might as well not get anyone involved in my life and vice versa. So I might as well be by myself. Um, and I've embraced my limitations. I, am, I, I call it my limitations because they, we all have those limitations. We still have those things that we need to deal with. Some people are great in dealing with marriages. I mean, you know, it's just finding the right partner, I guess. Maybe I just have it. And... How the hell am I going to find one partner and stuck in the house? <laughs> I'm dealing with myself and applications like Match.com is not going to help me either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I let, I, let, I let fate take me there, but the fear has gone. I have friends. I have lady friends. I have... Um, you know, I have places to travel to if this moment, I, I don't think that there's still a restriction in traveling anymore. Eventually it's going to open up. That's the, that's the one thing that kind of broke my heart when I found out that, you know, traveling will be so limited. I said, ah, oh, travel is what I love to do. And I can travel by myself and I enjoy it. Right. Yeah. What What's your uh, hope for Philippine cinema and the way or even like teleseries, right? Like you always mm. have a steady, reliable, uh, maybe source of employment because you're booked for roles that you are famous for, like the contributor the roles. But then again, you have expressed uh, some wishes about, you wish they wouldn't make contributors so black and white, that they would have, you mm. know, more shades of gray and not be stereotyped. What would you like to tell people who write these roles about how to oh. portray people? Frankly, it's a matter of allowing themselves to get out of the box, which I'm not sure they will yet because they're still very much dependent on commercialism and what people like to watch. Um, so I hope that they become a little more courageous to not... Um, dumb down our audience and instead elevate the audiences with what we can see them. But it's slowly changing. What I'd really like to see is the unity of the profession and having it professionalized, you know, rather than just kind, rather than it just um, fighting for 
you know, the the details of the. Uh, it's been an ongoing problem, and um, kalat kasi siya yung industriya, so it's hard to unify it. And without again the professionalization of the government, which I shouldn't say anything more, it's not gonna happen. And unless each and each individual is willing to come together, there are different different unions now that come together to to fight for a cause, but. Um, it's still zeroed into that one cause rather than seeing the overall for the long run. That's my dream, but it's something that's much too big to handle. Um, at this point, even economically, because they don't even know where it's heading. Um, right. Theater, theaters are closing. So right. the issues are very basic. It's right. than for it to move forward with some of we can't even get back to work at the moment people That's are still true. calibrate yeah uh, productions are still calibrating how the iga protocols can be implemented hirap na hirap din mag adjust na sa tv culture because That's we have true. a lot of people that are, are already employed and now we have to limit our our staffing to much much less That's even true. the way that we're going to be directed the act they are not allowed to anymore be uh, surrounded by people or stylists being near them, makeup artists. Wow, it's a big change. Um, for how long, I don't know. But a lot of this is positive because there are a lot of um, uh, rules in it that can be imp- that will be implemented that should have been implemented even way before. As far as you know, working hours are concerned, uh, rehearsals, uh, the process of the work. So, you know, I only trust that it will usher better things to come. That's I tried roles. I just want women to be represented differently, um, especially to allow us to um, expand the age gap, the age limit of those that can be um, represented in their stories. Women my age, uh, more heroic women that are, you know, that are human, not uh, fairy tale heroic women. So, um, if television pare ng ating ano form of entertainment, and of course digi- digital, <clears throat> the, the films I'm not sure uh, how soon that's gonna go back. The theaters have closed. People are beginning to invent in the states drive-in movies again. Back to the fifties, diba? Why not? Right. Yeah. yeah. Like right now, they're really more basic and fundamental yeah. <laughs> things that concern yeah. us. What are your hopes for? I know everything's uncertain, but what are your hopes for our country that you obviously love <laughs> because you have come back and are now giving back? And, you know, things are not. Uh, at their best right now and it's very painful i'm sure to see huh, what's going on in our country what hopes do you still have and how do you want to help uh, my hope <laughs> my hope is not just only for the country i think what everyone's hope is really for the entire world is to just continue to be more uh positive in 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 right. in, in in each of our own mindsets and collectively right. we will hopefully bring about healing. Right. I think it has to start within us. So right. leadership has to come also from the conscien- the consciousness of our people who, who vote. Right. Um, so I just do my thing. I focus on what I can in terms of what's good for me and what's good hopefully for the other um and as far as getting out there and making myself statements as to fighting and and protesting and i'm not in that frame of mind not to say that the others are doing it and it's wrong i'm not judging it i'm just not in that space right now I think uh, the world needs love. <laughs> <laughs> right. The world needs love. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I mean, I'm not sure I beat all. 
oh, for my oh. first session tomorrow. You just oh. picked my brain. Maybe it's because it's fresh from my writing it down. Right. But for tomorrow's I'm session, we shared already the first ex- class. A super sneak. excited. Thank you so much for this little master class about your life. <laughs> I've been quite transparent. Yeah. Well, that's another thing you're gonna get. What you see is what you get tomorrow. I can't wait. Thank you for all the inspiring insights. You have Thank definitely you. shown us that life's wonders and excitement should never stop. And we should never stop. So thank you yeah. so much, Sheree. Thank you, Mirce. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. I, you I will. All okay. right. Bye. 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 Hi. <laughs> Bye, everyone. This has been TikTok, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.